Hi everyone. Happy Monday. Today is Monday, June 21st. I'm Rendy Murphy, Epidemiologist and Director of Disease Surveillance at the Mobile County Health Department. Um, seems like it's been a week or two since I've um, um, shared any updates. Thanks, big thanks to Dr. Eichel, who's been um, standing in um, for me while I've been out. So um, this is our next to last weekly Facebook Live. Next next Monday will be our last um, Facebook Live, our weekly Facebook Live. As you guys know, the um, statewide emergency order, the COVID state of emergency order is going to be expiring on July 6th. So we will discontinue our weekly updates as long as things continue to look good. Of course, we will come back to you um, if things change. So again, the impact of COVID-19, the pandemic, um, on the world locally and uh, the United States and locally, uh, worldwide nearing 179 million cases of COVID-19 with 3.9 million deaths. In the United States, um, around 33,500,000 cases of COVID-19 with over 600,000 deaths. And in Alabama, we're today reporting um, on 549,013 COVID-19 with 11,311 deaths. So in Mobile County, the cumulative number of, of Mobile County residents who've been diagnosed with, with COVID-19 stands at one, four, sorry, 42,158. There were 11 um, cases reported to us yesterday. Numbers still really, really low. The cumulative number of people who have died is 831 and the cumulative number of people hospitalized in mobile hospitals for COVID-19 is 5,092, zero were hospitalized yesterday. So if we look at the daily number of patients hospitalized, you know, any patients in the hospital for COVID-19, it has been down below 20 per day for the last four days, so that's really good news. In our weekly expanded report, um, you can just kind of look at the way the trends are going, still everything um, looking good. Last week, 155 cases of COVID-19 were reported to us. So we've been under 200 cases reported to us um, for the last four weeks. So again, good news that those numbers are staying low. Let's see if I can get my tablet to go to the next page. Um, in we're still in the middle of June, so we expect for the month we'll see a, a, a lower number of cases, but we'll have to wait and see what that looks like after the end of June. And then I'm looking towards finding the number of hospitalized. So, you know, the number have hospitalized had been trending somewhat flat, a little bit up, but it's, it's staying very low. We like that a lot. Um, the number of emergency department visits for influenza-like illness or COVID-like illness both of those um, is fairly stable, so that's good news. Last week, just we have date of death on one person, so that we know of only um, one person who died with COVID last um, last week. But just something, to, and the percent positive, we talk about this a lot, the percent positive, this is positive tests. We still are hitting our testing goals, but the percent positive is still down below 5%. It's around between three or four percent any given week. So these are all good things. I just want to remind you of a couple of things. You know, we we talk about this, the importance of prevention measures. I mean, we have a really safe and effective vaccine. Um, anyone 12 and over is eligible to get vaccinated. We're seeing high coverage in older people and not great <laughs> coverage in younger people. Um, CDC released a report today that said by May 22nd of this year, 57% of people 18 or older in the U.S. had received one or more doses. But the highest vaccine coverage isn't among people 65 and over. Nationwide, vaccine coverage in 65 and over is 80%, and that is phenomenal. But it's lowest in people who are 18 to 29. So nationally in that age group, it's just 38% nationally that have been vaccinated. It's much less than that in Mobile County. So we really have to, to do, um, we've got some work to do with trying to get 
younger people vaccinated. And it really is critical to continuing to reduce COVID cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. There's data coming out now showing that you know, hospitalizations in the older age group compared to younger, like it's much different now post vaccine availability than it was back in December and January when we, you know, didn't have um, immunity from vaccine back then. So it's really important, you know, data showing that the vaccine is doing a great job at redu reducing hospitalizations and deaths in older population but um, not in younger populations because not, you know, a lower percentage of them are vaccinated. Um, so it's it really important to, to get vaccinated. Another myth that I hear a lot is that once you are infected, you're immune. And this is not true. We know that reinfections are happening. Um, some people, we know people who've been reinfected have had hospitalizations and a few have died. So reinfection occurs. Um, there have been thousands of people in Alabama who have been, who had PCR confirmed COVID at some time in the past, and then 90 days or, or longer following their initial infection, they have been reinfected. And not all of these are variants. In fact, just a small proportion of the ones that we've detected are variants that we know of. Um, about a third of these people who've been re reinfected are asymptomatic. So two thirds of them are out there spreading COVID without even knowing it. So again, lots of reasons to be um, vaccinated. If you're fully vaccinated, you can pretty much go about your life as you did pre-COVID. Um, also, if you're fully vaccinated, if you're exposed to someone at COVID, um, you don't have to quarantine as long as you're not sick. And I think people, I, I keep hearing that they're surprised to hear that there are still isolation and quarantine orders. And this is absolutely still in place. So if you are exposed to COVID and you're not vaccinated, you're going to get a letter from us that says you have to stay home for, for 14 days, for 10 days if you're asymptomatic um, and continue to be so through the full 14 days. So that is it for today. Lots of talk about variants. We know we have um, UK variants in Mobile. We, um, we know we have the Delta or India variant in very small numbers in Mobile. Again, a more reason to try to get high vaccination rates because these more highly transmissible um, forms of COVID-19, um, there is, uh, you are defended um, to a great degree if you're vaccinated, the treatments still work on them. So again, um, we just need everyone out there who's vaccinated to take a free, um, safe and effective vaccine to try to um, help your community continue to have these low numbers and to keep the hospitalizations and deaths low. So I think that's about it for us what, today. About the cargo ship? About what? The cargo ship. Oh, yeah. I think, you know, we've had a, a I was just going to give a brief update on our vaccination efforts. Um, as we've said, you know, the Mobile County Health Department is vaccinating anywhere between 350 to 450 or 500 people per week. It takes us about, you know, 15 events to get this to happen because we're, you know, vaccinating um, here, there, and everywhere. So we have a, a really great collaboration going on in the Port of Mobile and in Theodore Shipping Channel where we are vaccinating um, members of crews. So if you're a cargo vessel, a oil or gas tanker, and you've been, um, you know, around the world, you come into the Port of Mobile, then we can help get the, we've been getting those folks vaccinated in pretty good numbers. It's just a real thrill to try to, you know, protect our port and protect global trade. Um, we, we are really very proud of this collaboration that got started through just, you know, a cold call that came to us from Norton Lilly. And we're super um, thankful for their partnership among others that we're working with in the Port of Mobile. Um, we also are continuing to vaccinate at our newborn clinic Monday through Friday. So this is walk-in. You can get Moderna or Pfizer or J&J &J or, or um, tested for COVID Monday through Friday from 9 to 3.30 at our Newburn our, um, Health Center at 248 Cox Street. Just walk in and get your first or second dose. Um, we're there every day. And starting the 6th of July, we're going to extend this daily vaccine and testing to our downtown Keeler Clinic. So we're really excited about that. And then we still have vaccine clinics sort of 
like I said, here, there, and everywhere. But the best way to stay up on where there might be a vaccine clinic near you is to go to our website, mchdcares.com. We have a list of all of our vaccine clinics. We did have to cancel um, several clinics on Friday and Saturday due to weather. Those have been rescheduled. We're excited this Saturday. We have an event at Dodge's in collaboration with Dodge's um, Barbershop on Dolphin Island Parkway. So please, if you're um, if you live on the um, on DIP or around um, that that those areas where um, Dotches is, we're going to send you a mailer. Should come in your mailbox, but please come join us there for vaccination. And again, um, check mchdcares.com for all of the locations, particularly those events that have been rescheduled because of inclement weather. So with that, I will stop. Yes. Mark says I'm in the clear, so we will chat with you again next Monday. Have a great and safe week and get vaccinated.